Hey everyone, it's the man who takes 10 minutes to solve a Rubik's Cube and head of sandbox development at Alpacadabras, Phil here. Today's video is all about VoxEdit and how to customize that model that you downloaded. So if you'd like to make tweaks or changes to the model that was created, this video is for you. Check it out. Hey, you've made it to another video. So this video, we are gonna show you how to make a, um, a small change to your PACA and then um, upload that PACA into GameMaker. So uh, here's the main box edit screen, which you saw before. Hopefully at this point, you've seen the pr prior videos you've gone through, you've shrunk the collision boxes and you don't need to, um, to worry about that. If for whatever reason you haven't done that, the previous video will help um, make sure that your asset functions better within gaming. You'll also see right there, no, where am I? There, that direction, there's a little white box. I think it'd be helpful if you guys can see what I'm clicking with my mouse um, as we go through these. So Vox said it has some mouse shortcuts, right click, left cut, or le left click and the middle button. So if you don't have a three button mouse, you're gonna have a bad time. That would be uh, something I would definitely recommend. So. We're gonna go into animator. We are gonna open the packa that we were working on before. So, you know, you, it'll be here in your recent files, but if I go to open file, you'll default to Vox Edit, depending on where you where you saved it prior, maybe your downloads folder, go back and find that VXR file. So you click on that VXR, click on open. And like I said prior, if you see a bunch of assets that don't match and there's giant white boxes much larger than your asset, watch the prior video to get that to get that fixed. But in this case, our packet is optimized. He is ready to go. Um, but I, I want to make a little tweak. So, you know, I, I own this packet. He's mine. And um, because of that, I want to um, I want to give him some some bags under his eyes and a, and a mustache. And so we're going to just walk real quickly through how to make some tweaks to the VXM files and then how to upload this new guy into Game Maker. So as I get up real close on his face and um, I think, you know what, he looks, he needs to be more tired looking. And so I'm gonna make a little tweak to his to his head. And so along the skeleton portion of things, you've got access to the, these are called nodes. And each one of these nodes, as you click on it, you can see what it corresponds to within the, within the model. So on the head itself, you have two children. So as you look at, you know, create child nodes, what that's referring to is, uh, nodes that are connected to another node. So if you move them, they move together. So um, just to, to sort of show what I'm talking about, if I move this head, you'll see that these ears move along with it, but the body stays the same. So I am on the head node. I am going this way and oh, oh. head goes back and forth. That's how a the parent and children nodes work. Your main parent node is your controller node, and I showed this in the last video. This moves everything um, in space, left or right. This shows you this um, sort of T, this X, Y, and Z coordinate. It shows you where the main middle of the world is, and it is a best practice to make sure that your assets are spawning on the ground and in the middle of the the model. So the good news is all the packages that you guys have downloaded, they've been optimized to, to work appropriately. You're welcome to break them, um, but that's sort of a best practice. So I'm gonna look at the head and you can see the head, this triangle means this is the rig and the, the box means the head VXM. Another way we could also edit the same asset is clicking on the head over here and hitting this pencil tool. And the pencil tool just brings up the the area of Vox Edit where I can make changes to this. And so you may only see a few colors here. There's a full sandbox palette, um, but you can sort of at this point kind of go wild. And so I'm gonna add a new color. Default to the prior color. The color I would like is, um, is sort of a pinkish. Now it's important to add a new color as an example, and you'll find this out if you just sort of went rogue on your own. Um, by clicking I, letter I on the keyboard and clicking on any voxel that's like an ink dropper so you know this is the prior color so if I would have just changed the prior color um, you'll see what happens it changes it across the anywhere that that color is on this model so you know we liked the pink sort of face on that packa so I don't want to make that mistake so I added a new color down here and obviously now when I start making tweaks nothing's gonna change because nothing's been assigned this color but I'm gonna give them kind of like a lightish sort of 
pink under eye bag. And so as we look at the, the tools that we have available to us, this first tool here, this is the, um, looks kind of like a Tetris piece. That's great. That's adding voxels to the world. Now you can only add voxels in the size of the collision box you have. And remember in the last video, we shrunk those collision boxes. So what that means is on the front of this pack is nose, there is no more space for voxels. So I can click to my heart's content. I'm not adding anything. Now above the nose though, you can see we've got some space. So if I do the same click, I'm adding voxels to our guy. Now I hit the end of the collision box, nothing happens. So I say that just because if you are trying to add pieces um, that are bigger than the size of the box, you're going to have to make some changes up here into the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And it's, Vox said it's pretty clear as to what ties to what. The red lines along the bottom here, um, the blue lines and the green lines are the same here. So if I were to say, you know what, I need to add ears to this pack of this guy just needs a set of ears. And I think those ears are roughly going to be about two voxels um, thick on each side. Then I need to, don't forget, you need to add four voxels because you need to an ear on each side. So 14 plus four is 18 and we've added four voxels. Great. Um, but lopsided. They add to one side of the model, so that sucks. What am I gonna do? Well, the good news is there are some tools right up here and some arrows that'll allow you to move your model and the box in space. And so we want that box to go one, two, over. Because once again, right, we, we added four, so divide by two. And now this thing's centered, right? You've got your, your pack ahead in the middle and you've got room to add two ears, so. Um, a pretty slick trick in box edit is this mirror tool so you don't have to draw things twice um, you know 3d work generally is our mirrored assets and so we're gonna turn that on right here and so you can see it draws a line down the middle of um, our Paca's face there's a line for the green right it cuts this green in half and so the top and the bottom are mirrored and then there's this blue line which cuts this this blue axis in place and since we're working on the the face we want the face to be mirrored, right? So if I add, you know, voxels here, we want it to happen on both sides. Um, we click on the the x axis mirror. Now you can do a little trial and error too, right? With this, there's no right or wrong. Um, mess around again. If you break stuff, Control Z is your best friend. So I'm going to press the I key. That's a shortcut, and it goes right to this eyedropper. You can click on the eyedropper too. Um, and I want to get the same color that we've already got for the rest of this, and so hitting I, clicking here, I've now got this color selected. I'm gonna make a new color by clicking the plus and it defaults to the last color we had, which is a pack of set. And I'm gonna drag this down just a little bit darker. So we've got a little bit of separation between the color of the pack of head and this new color. I'm gonna click on this Tetris tool, which is adding a piece, you know, creating new voxels. The one below it is paint. So if I were to draw in here, it's not adding anything, it's just painting over. And because we have this split the other side look at that it's got the same paint mark but control z um, and then the last one is remove voxels right and so if i were to do the same thing here um, i am just holding down the mouse button and taking a big chunk out guess what it takes a block one block deep on each side so i'm going to control z that so you've got add paint subtract and then these tools are one voxel at a time and something that's helpful um, for a lot of people is is along the the upper area here you've got voxel edges quad edges um, nice edges which I don't I think it's a funny word for it but I tend to like the voxel edges side of things so you can see where every single little block is that makes up this pack of and so if you're trying to figure out well you know what's the halfway point you can actually count out the blocks and things like that and so I'm going to turn that functionality on and you can see as I go through them these just this is like what a flat face I think looks like so you know where the faces are and this one gets rid of and I kind of like this actually now that I was making fun of it um, serves me right for being a jerk um, this is sort of the outline of each individual X Y and Z layer without the the middle bits and then this is what it looks like in game maker but we're gonna stick here for now um, and we're gonna go single box so this is a line so if I wanted to drag out a a long line at one time um, this is fate. We'll get into these tools in another video, but for right now, I want to add a voxel and I want to do it with this pencil here. And so I'm going to add an ear. So I'm going to start about right here and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, four, five. I'm going to add one more ear. 
Then I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna look at that and I've now added an ear to either side of my Paca. And I kind of like it. I think it's okay, right? It's all right. But I want to do a little bit more. And so um, I'm going to add another color. I'm, going to, I'm still in the color that I'm on. If I was, wasn't sure, I hit I and I click on it. Add a color and I'm going to go a little bit. Actually, I'm going to go way darker. It's going to be like the ear hole, right? I'm going to hit number three on my keyboard, but you can also just click on this paint tool, right? So I don't want to um, add voxels. I am going to just paint. I'm going to click and hold down. And now I've added... I think I added too many. I'm gonna hit Control Z. I'm gonna add two. That kind of gives us a sense of like some depth. This ear has got a hole in it, right? And I could get real fancy. I could hit I, and now I'm back to that color of the ear. And two is the hot key, but it's also the same as this Tetris piece. And maybe I add something behind it just to kind of hide that. So now my, my pack has got ears, but it's like a badass pack now that I'm looking at this. And so I'm gonna add one more color and it's going to be um, it's going to be gold, like a goldish color, like a very brightish yellow gold. Um, I'm going to turn off this XYZ mirroring because this Paca has got just on one side a single earring. So, like, if you saw this pack on the street, you'd be like, "Don't mess with him. He's got one ear pierce," which I think is like a tough thing, tough guy thing. Um, and there you go. Now, let's get back to the original idea, which is adding bags under this pack of eyes. So I am going to add another color. And you can add up to 256 colors. So um, certain assets may have a full palette already at your disposal. Once again, it's important as you're looking to understand what colors you can change by clicking I and, and not changing colors that are already assigned to things. But in this case, we just added this. We know it's um, not assigned to anything. I'm going to kind of give it a very reddish hue and sort of a light pink. I'm going to go back to mirroring. I want to turn that on because I want to split this pack's face in half. I'm going to press three on my keyboard because that's the shortcut for the for the painting. And I'm just going to give him some eye bags. And I kind of like that. What if I gave him bags on the top too? Uh, nope, I don't like that. I'm going to hit Control Z. And I'm going to darken these up just a little. Like this pack has he's seen some he's seen some some rough stuff. He's been through it, right? He's got one ear pierced. He's got these bags under his eyes. He has not slept. He has very poor sleep hygiene. And you know what? I'm gonna add another color. He's got some he's got a he's got one tooth. And that's it. He's got one tooth. And so I'm picking sort of a whitish color. Bright white is never the best choice. It kind of depends, but I tend to try to get a little bit of an off-white. I'm gonna give this dude uh, once again now I'm gonna go back to the Tetris tool. It's two as a shortcut on the keyboard. I'm still on a single box, so I'm going to give him a tooth. And now, look what happened. I had the mirror tool, tool still on, so he got two teeth. I don't hate that, actually. He looks a little bit like a, like a hippo, kind of, with those ears and the teeth. Um, but on the top, he definitely only needs one, so I'm going to turn off the mirroring tool. I'm going to add one tooth. Cool, I am digging this. He is looking a little bit um, rougher around the edges, which is my preference. Um, and I think I'm done. I think I've made the the tweaks that I wanna make to this model. Now, if I made a bunch of stuff and I'm like, you know what, this sucks, I don't want it, then um, when I hit the back button here, I would say, no, don't save it, and it would default to how it is, but no, I'm happy, so I'm gonna hit yes. So ch <laughs> check it out. This pack looks like it is, um, he's been up late. He's been up late doing all sorts of stuff. Now, I can see a mistake that I made, and maybe you do as well, which is his head doesn't look right anymore. Something is off about the way his head looks. What is going on? It is off to one side. And the reason that happened is remember, and I went back to the pencil tool, remember we added four voxels to this space. We said, you know what, we need some room for the ears. The mistake I made is I didn't change down here, which is called the pivot tool. And the pivot tool sets where the access point is where the where the where the skeleton knows to, to place this asset and so what happened was this pivot is always in, it's in the middle right but in this case it was in the middle when we had 14 voxels and so that's why it's set to seven because half of 14 is seven and now we're at 18 so um if you do a little bit of math you can know that 18 divided by two is nine and I could move this two voxels and I'm holding down the shift key when I move so I snap. 
um, to solid boxes. I can also just drag it and it goes numbers, a little bit of numbers at a time, but the shift button is an easy way to do it. And um, now you can see in the sort of shadow preview, oh, his head is straight. And this fixes it for all the animations. I don't have to go into each animation. Um, the other option though would be, um, I'm putting it back to where it was originally, is if you right click with the, with the right mouse button on here, you can set to center. And so this is a really helpful shortcut. So if I click set to center, um, it finds the middle of it. If I click it again and set set to floor, look at that. My, my pivot point is now at the bottom and centered. And you'll find that for, I don't know, a good two thirds of your asset, that's exactly where you want the pivot point. So there's some shortcuts. Once again, holding down shift, I can move these things wherever. I mean, I could put his, his head in his chest and he would look um, absolutely, you know, freaky, right? Kind of cool, but um, I want to right click, set to center, set to floor, and his head is now in the right place. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna save, I'm gonna say yes. As we look at our PACA, we look, okay, great. His head is now in the correct place. I'm gonna, uh, W is a shortcut for me. I think it's space by default to, um, to play the animation. He looks he looks pretty good. I like the changes that I made to him. I'm happy with how he's come together. Um, so I want to export him. I want to put him into Game Maker. I want to be able to spend some some time assigning some some uh, behaviors and some actions to him. So pretty simply, file, export, export to Marketplace. And when I click on this, you're going to see it's going to pop up the sandbox window. It's going to pop up my wallet. Make sure if you're struggling to, to figure out why it's either not connecting or, or you're, it's not working, make sure you're logged into the sandbox on whatever account you want this to go into ahead of time. So, you know, if Chrome is your default browser or Safari, it's gonna have to be Chrome, I think, because of MetaMask. Um, log into sandbox, make sure you're on the right, the right browser window, and then just click export to marketplace. You can pick sort of what um, view this asset's going to have and because you can't publish yet um, to the market um, you'll have some limited functionality but you can publish to the your version of game maker which is the important part for now you can pick what their uh, what their sort of default asset is when it comes in idle tends to be uh, the way game maker works so I'm gonna leave this as idle if you wanted it to come in as a as laying there um, dead you'd want it on death pose because death is where it falls over right and death pose is where it's it's still so you wouldn't want it to fall over and over it would be um, it would look kind of freaky so you know death pose would be an option but I'm gonna keep this guy in idle and I'm gonna export it and like I said you're gonna see um, the sandbox marketplace window pop up and I'm going to click on this is a new asset I don't have anything in my wallet. What do I want to name this guy? Um, I'm gonna name him. I'm gonna name. What am I gonna name him? I'm gonna name him Steve Wilberry. His name's Steve Wilberry. Um, Steve Wilberry. That's his name. That's just that's. This is Steve. Um, Steve loves making kites and dancing whoops dancing with his aunt genie that's this is Steve Wilbur he's my character he's my packa that's his backstory he loves making kites and dancing with his aunt genie um, his his what? This is this is the the hardest part, right? What what do I want hit this to say about him? Um, he never learned to play the piano, and and he still regrets it. So Steve Wilbury loves making kites, dancing with his aunt Janine. He never learned to play the piano and still regrets it. So I'm going to hit continue. I think what you're gonna see here is gonna look different depending on who you are. And um, I'm part of the creator fund, so I may you may see some things that pop up here that that um, you don't have options. But I think the overall 
idea. And I think this is a category. These things are arbitrary. Pick whatever you want. You know, you could you could say he's a piece of wood. These are more for when you're sorting through assets in Game Maker that they pop up in the right place. And so I kind of like, you know, nature would make sense for Steve. I think he is um, a, he's a rural guy. He makes a lot of kites, so he's a rural guy. He's out in the woods. Um, and, and, you know, retro is where I like to put some of my assets because they have a thing. These themes, uh, we always go to none. This is a walkthrough on how to do gems and catalyst. Cool. Yes. Um, this hasn't been sort of defined yet for sandbox. So my recommendation is until this is a public facing thing for now, I'm going to click on none. Continue. And I will save this as a draft. Oh, and actually, now that I realize I'm not on my Game Maker Fun thing, so you should see exactly what I saw, right? Which is your only option right now is save as draft. Um, and that means that you've saved it into your inventory. So now um, on my Packa profile, the only asset that's in there is Steve Wilbury. You can see the description. Um, you can see it was created by me. I have not created anything else. This is the first asset I've created. You can preview his default animation. All the other pieces, right, that came with the asset that were baked in by the by the alpaca team, his walk. And there you go. If you look back and you say, you know what, I need to make some changes to that, edit info, you go back right through the process, right? When you get a little better at understanding how Game Maker works, you can make decisions about what this is, and maybe you decide that um, Steve Wilbury is a... He's ground prey. He's... But dude, this guy's had it rough. He's ground prey. He's meant to be eaten by a ground predator. That's just his lot in life, right? Um, maybe he's a farmer. Maybe he actually has some, some personality. Maybe he's a real jerk, and he's an enemy fighter, and as soon as he spawns into the game... Um, he comes and chase after you. The good news is these behaviors, having them set to none is kind of a benefit. You can change and add them once you're in Game Maker uh, to whatever you want. Some things like a door, it's helpful to have shortcut as a door when it's uploaded because it just is one less step of you having to make changes when you're in Game Maker. But for, um, for this, we're going to keep it at none. Continue once again because we put the edit button. We're just going through the same menus. Save as a draft. Steve Wilbury is ready to be played. Um, thank you. Hopefully this was helpful. I think in the next video, I'm going to go through some additional box edit um, and a little bit more in depth about some changes to things, uh, including uh, adjusting animations. And then following videos, let's take a look at putting Steve into uh, Game Maker and um, setting him as your avatar. So hope to see you in a later video. Thanks. Actually, I hope you i don't see you because that means that you're at my house i hope that you come and join me in a later video um which i think makes more sense thanks